we have some tragic times in the military right now, and I'm sure there's some of you in here that have faced tragedy face to face, up and personal. But there is a humorous side of the military, and I'll try to explain some of that. We have this Army and Marine veterans. They were reminiscing. A lot of veterans like to reminisce. And the Army guy was saying, boy, when we were doing our drills, we were so sharp. All we remember is slap, slap, click. The Marine says, well, we remember that too, but ours was slap, slap, jingle. Jingle? Yeah, our medals were red. <laughs> the sailor and Army Ranger, they were arguing about who had the tougher career in the military. The Army Ranger says, hey, I spent tour in uh, World War II, I was three times in Vietnam, in Iraq, Afghanistan. The sailor says, lucky you, all you had was shore duty. <laughs> this corporal is selling, his job is to sell life insurance to the recruits, and he was selling 100%. The captain was wondering, how can this guy be selling 100% to these recruits? So he went to the back of the room and listened to listen to what the corporal had to say. And the corporal said, okay guys, listen up. If you buy this government life insurance and you were to die in battle, the government has to pay your family $200,000. If you don't have this insurance and you die in battle, the government only has to pay your family $1,000. Who do you think they're going to send in a battle first? <laughs> he sold them all. Here's a story even about the Israeli military. This young recruit was in the Israeli military and he goes to his sergeant. He said, I'd like a three-day pass. The sergeant says, you haven't even been in long enough to get a three-day pass. Well, about a week goes by, the young recruit comes back, but he comes back with a captured Arab tank. The sergeant says, wow, I'm gonna give you six days. His friend says to him, how did you do that? How'd you get that tank? He says, well, I took one of our tanks, I drove it to the border, I saw an Arab tank, I put up a white flag, I said to the driver, you want a three-day pass? <laughs> When the recruits got done in boot camp, the military wanted to know just how much science they had learned in boot camp. So they put out this questionnaire and tried to get it to all the boot cup, uh, boots. Anyway, it was a simple question. It said you have this half mile high mountain. You're near the equator. It's 60 degrees. You have a 190 pound master sergeant and a 170 pound chief petty officer. You drop them both off the cliff at the same time. Which one hits first? The most popular answer was, who cares? <laughs> and there's some ego with military officers. This Navy captain, in charge of a ship, of course, sent out this message. Divert your course 15 degrees to the south to avoid a collision. This Canadian sends a message back. Divert your course 15 degrees to the north. The Navy commander says, you divert, I am in charge, captain of a, the largest US aircraft carrier in the Navy. Divert your course and we will take action to be sure this ship, ship is safe. The Navy is not second to no one. The Canadian writes back, sends back, it's your call, Captain. You're communicating with a lighthouse. <laughs> this Air Force pilot is talking to a submarine commander and telling that submarine commander how difficult it is to fly aircraft now. You have to have a good math and physics background. It's a lot harder than to run a submarine. The commander says, wait a minute. We have a lot of math and physics we have to know. The pilot says, come on, your math is fundamental. What do you mean? 
He says, look, all you gotta do is take the number of times you dive, add it to the number of times you surface, divide by two, if the number's uneven, don't open the hatch. <laughs> The sweet, elderly, white-haired, little old lady lived next to a boot camp, Navy boot camp. In fact, she had a fence that was common with the parade grounds. Well, she was walking past the gate, dragging garbage bags. The guy in the gate says, Grandma, where are you going? She says, well, I've got a bag full of $20 bills, and I'm taking them to the bank. Where did you get $20 bills? She says, well, you know, I'm, my fence is right next to the parade grounds, and a lot of those young boot campers, when they're out on the parade grounds, they don't want to run all the way back to the barracks to go to the bathroom. So they've been coming up to my fence, going through my fence onto my flowers. It upset me, so I took my great big garden shears, and I stand by the fence. And when they come by, I say, 20 bucks or else. He says, wow, I can see why you've got so much money in that bag. But what's in the other bag? He says, they don't all pay the $20.